Beloved in Christ, ladies and gentlemen, compatriots, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are coming again to our morning session on Family Life Series. Remember, last week we looked at the areas where most couples have challenges in their marriages. Of course, there are many problem areas as marriages, but these five or so are the most typical areas. One is communication, which to me is a cross-cutting one because without a good communication, everything else can become a problem. So with communication, we have money problems, we have sex problems, we have problems relating to parenting and in-laws. These seem to be universal areas and I want to develop some thoughts about them, which I call the marital flash points. Today I would like to introduce the leading cause of marital challenges, that is communication between husbands and wives. Permit me to read a few verses quickly from the Bible. First and foremost, I want to read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. What a wonderful statement for couples to be transparent and truthful with one another because the two are one. In the same chapter, I would like to look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29, which is a wonderful guidance when it comes to marital communication. We are told that when we are together, not necessarily in the marital context, but in all our relationships. It says, let no corrupting or foul language, corrupting talk, come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as the occasion demands, that it may give grace to those who hear. Wonderful advice about marital communication. Today in my introduction to maybe two or three series on marital communication, I would like to share some characteristics of marital communication that makes it unique in the sense that while all other communications between teachers and students, workers, that's bosses and their subordinates or among peers, among friends, are quite important. When it comes to marriage, we are faced with a very unique relationship. And yet, if we don't get it right, then it's like having an engine which is not performing well because it has no oil and the various pieces rubbing against each other which is not possible for you to sustain any marriage under such circumstance. Because in marriage, as we looked at, you are looking at unity, oneness, in spirit, soul, and body. But normally, when we talk about communication, people are thinking about speaking to one another only. But that is not true. For example, the two passages we we read from Ephesians, one says we have to be truthful and honest with one another. In other words, our motivation affects our communication. And he says that no, then comes the actual words that I let no communication come out of your mouth, which is not good for building one another up. The import of that is that communication is both verbal and then verbal. Even silence is communication. Imagine a man and his wife sit together 
and for three days everybody is silent. You have spoken volumes. It's the same about our friendships, or you go to office and it says for three days you will not greet and say anything. So silence even is a powerful communication. So we are talking about communication involving moods, expressions, silence, as well as the verbal communication. From cliches to deep sharing of our emotions. And in marriage, there is no way you can say you are not communicating. Interestingly, even when you are apart, this easy communication with uh, WhatsApp, Texas, if a husband is away for three days, no phone call, no WhatsApp, no test. Is he communicating or not? He is communicating volumes and vice versa. So, let me share five things that make marital communication very unique and why we should spend time and consciously develop what it takes to be good communicators with one another as husband and wife. First is the depth of marital communication. In terms of speaking between spouses, there is practically no bar. Whether in terms of subjects, in terms of disclosure, and any attempt to be hypocritical will reveal itself in a matter of time. It is said that when you say one lie, you require maybe ten lies in order to cover it. And in the marriage, you have to be doing that over and over until it cracks. The depth of marital communication, you are talking about money, you are talking about sex, you are talking about children, you may talk about politics, who will be tied to you if one is an NDC and one is an MPP. But no subject can be declared out of bounds when it comes to marital communication. And you cannot end up at cliche communication. Eventually, you have to be completely honest and transparent with one another. So the first is the depth, and the second is the range of the subjects, as I have mentioned. When I go to work as an economist, we talk economics. When I go to church, we go and praise the Lord. When you are at home, it is both a church, it's a business, and everything else. So if you are not prepared to cover every range, you must as well not marry. Then, marital communication totally is constant. And this is not obvious when people are in marriage that they are always communicating, whether absent or present, whether speaking or not, because every move of yours can have an interpretation. And that is why I believe that those who are Christians and are chosen transparency are the happiest people on the world when it comes to being married because there is a constant flow of affection, of love, of regard to one another, whereas the opposite makes marriage not for better, but always for worse. The fourth is that the outside influences on the couples when it comes to their communication tend to be highest in marriage. When I go to workplace, it's my boss and my subordinates. Baka, it's finished. When I go to the church, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> in fact, uh, unfortunately, people are likely to be more hypocritical at church than elsewhere because they feel compelled to behave like holy people even if they have beaten their wives or insulted their husbands before coming. However, when we are at home, everyone is impacting our marriage and marital communication. The maid in the house, their behavior is impacting you. If you have a security in the house, whether they came to work on time or not, can make you angry. Uh, not to mention the impact of even your work environment. If someone comes from work moody, 
Probably he has been chastised by the, uh, the boss. And yet, their spouse may become the victim as a result of that. You have children, you have in-laws, you know, and almost every... <laughs> Let me pause to say something. When I was getting married, everybody who heard that you are going to marry starts giving you advice. Even people who are making bankrupts of their own marriages. And I remember, my wife and I, just after the honeymoon, we were in, visiting my mother-in-law in Nkoko. And lo and behold, one of her distant relatives, an older man, was just telling her how she should behave, take care of his niece, bra 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 bra. I stood there and looked at the man's face, and for a long time I said nothing. He turned to my wife and said that, whether I understand me, for which I didn't say anything either, making it worse. And then we left. <laughs> My wife says, Yeah, <laughs> Kwabra. Then later on, I found he has a man with two wives and all those type of things. But everybody tries to influence your marriage, advise you, or and when you get you are married. So because of this influence, if you are not careful, you can easily destroy your marriage. The worst still, especially in the villages, some people will exaggerate how well their husbands are treating them or vice versa when indeed they are lying. When you go to church, you seem, you seem that everybody is happily married and yet every now and then you get a bombshell that somebody has divorced. Wow! These people who are in church and were behaving like this, you must be very careful about the influences that come to our marriage. So let me say that marriage, marital communication is very, very important and unique because of its depth, because of the range of issues marriage, married couples have to deal with money, children, in-laws, top politics, everything. Also, it is constant. You, there's no hiding place, literally, from speaking with your spouse. And fourthly, the influences from outsiders can be many, including people who are not members of your nuclear family, but with whom you are living in the house, and neighbors. What does that all mean is the fifth one. It means that marital communication is complex. And if you joke with it, let me use a literal Ghanaian uh, English, it will joke with you. With the Hwangura about. You must be very careful. And oftentimes we don't think through how important is our communication in sustaining the marriage as God intended it. If we have time later, we will look at a beautiful flow of communication between Solomon and one of his wives, the Shulamite woman, who we from if reading is likely to be an African black woman because at a certain point he talks about himself, says I'm dark and comely and so she was unique to Sol among Solomon's wife but in the book of Songs of Song we see almost a near perfect communication between husband and wife but the complexity of marriage, marital communication cannot be downplayed as in all other communication, marital communication sheds all the characteristics of any communication class these unique ones. What are the characteristics of all marital communication? One, always willingly or unwillingly, there will be someone initiating the communication. Then of course there's a channel of communication whether it is verbal or silence, writing a letter, a phone call or WhatsApp. And the mode of communication we use can also impact the communication between the two. And of course, it, there's a third element in every communication, the response of the other person. And therefore, these three elements will be there in all communications, and marital communication 
is no exception. Now let us look at how our communication can be better or for worse, depending upon how we initiate communication. First, our motivation is very important. You know, some adults like to manipulate children and tell them lies. If you, do, you are doing so with your children, stop, because soon your children will find you out. But what is most annoying is for another adult to take you for granted and try to manipulate you. You and I, when we find out, that the person has been sly, has been hiding things, has been trying, we get angry. And therefore, number one, as a partner in initiating communication, your motivation is very important. Whether it's for goodwill, to build one another up. And I believe that as Christian couples, we should never initiate a communication where in our hearts of hearts and in your mind it is not for the good of building our marital relationship and there to me is most important we must be honest at, and if we have to deal with a bad emotion like anger we must as well pray about it so that while you are communicating it it will not spoil the marital atmosphere. So your motivation is important. Your commitment to truthfulness and honesty as the one of the communicators in the marriage is also important. But for me, your behavior. Many people don't know that words always take their context from history. How you have lived with a person for some time. Then your words are giving meaning. For example, if there's a consistency of good behavior, your words are received positively until proven otherwise. But when you are hanky-panky type of person being deceptive and other things, you put the other one in defense and suspicion. So consistency of behavior is important. Also, the contest is very important. <laughs> we had a God uh, parents, my wife and I, in Australia. And <laughs> mom, Fiona was not well and was admitted in hospital. But in between, uh, and before that, both he and Papa were arranging to buy barrier graves, barrier grounds. There you can buy your, where you want to be buried in advance, which I'm going to do in Shiromwasi. My wife and I have always chosen where we want to be buried. We are going to build our nice place where we will be as our lasting place. So that we don't have to worry where we will be buried. At least we won't compete for Sioux Cemetery. There we have more land. But on a more serious note, while mommy was uh, sick in hospital, dad was invited and he went and paid for the... Uh, the grave. So excited about it, he went to the hospital to talk to mommy. Mom, I've gotten the graves now. <laughs> Imagine the contest. You are going to tell your wife in hospital that you have just bought a grave <laughs> for her. You see, and you know who told us, his mom, he said that your dad was coming to talk to me about the grave when we were I was in the hospital, lying on the hospital bed, and we laughed. And it was a great joke of the family. So the contest is important, as well as the timing. When somebody is sick or has come from work, and you see from their face that they have already been battered at work, that is not the time for you to come and share the problems you have had. At least let the time elapse, rest and other things, and after all, there will be time for love and guidance in the evening and that will be a good time again so you must be very careful when we are initiating communication the second is that we must always check the channels of our communication to be appropriate because if you are not careful 
either your physical state, your guilt, unresolved conflicts, suspicion, and things like that can clog the communication. So you must fine tune your communication lines and you must look for the appropriate medium. For example, despite telephones, despite WhatsApp, emails, I found that when I really want to show appreciation and love to my wife, I write a love letter. And still, a love letter to a 74-year-old, you can see her lying in her bed. She's not near me to hear me, but you will catch me up tomorrow when, uh, and then I'll be in trouble. But you see her smile. Every married person appreciates a love letter. Also, being cho choicy, uh, choosy when it comes to when to communicate. Finally, let me say that how we receive our spouse when they communicate is equally important. We must give positive feedback. We should avoid negative responses, which can be pretense, trivializing, or even silence. And even if for some reason you think that you cannot give a feedback, you must give a feedback to say that, honey or darling, please, I've heard you. I'll come back to you later. You cannot receive communication and not react to it. And we'll be talking about the importance of active listening and above all, especially when your spouse discloses the most confidential things to you to keep it secret, confidentiality between husband and wife when it comes to communication. So with this, I will bring an end our session for today. But from next week, we'll be looking at specificities of how to communicate effectively, affectionately, and lovingly as husbands and wife. Shalom, and may the Lord be with you till we meet at the same time next week. It's me, your brother Stephen Adair.